So a big part of my practice is, and has always been, coming into cases getting close to trial. And in fact, when I opened my own practice 20, now almost 24 years ago, almost all of my cases were less than a month old because I would come in and come in right before trial, et cetera. And so last week, um, someone came to me to talk about getting involved in a trial that's set in about five weeks, yeah, six weeks. And one of the big concerns that they had, and rightfully so, was having never tried a case before, he was worried that, you know, he could go to these trial classes, but that strategy and that thought process is not really taught in these trial classes, and he would miss stuff. And sure enough, God love him, thank God he brought me in, he was missing a lot of stuff. And I want to talk about probably the single biggest thing that is overlooked in preparing for trial and then in being in trial, that if you haven't been through it and you haven't gotten the stick beating you upside the head at trial to make you recognize how important it is, um, you probably don't recognize, you probably don't, it's not on your radar. And that is, believe it or not, the scheduling of witnesses. And for experienced trial lawyers, if you ask them what's the most difficult part of a trial, I and many others will say scheduling witnesses. Now, that's not very sexy. I want to know about closing argument. Isn't that the hardest? And that, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's certainly not as difficult, in my opinion, as making sure you have your ducks in a row, especially, oh, God forbid, if you're in federal court, but especially if you have a stickler for a state court judge especially if they say, well, you don't have your next witness ready, ready to go, then you rest. And I don't even know if legally that's appropriate, but in federal court, federal judges don't care. And so what am I talking about? And so let's talk about what I'm doing with this lawyer who came in last week. The biggest impediment to having witnesses come in in a way that you want them to come in are your expert witnesses. Their doctors, right, think, what's the old joke, right? What's the difference between a doctor and, you know, a federal judge? Because they both think that they're God, right? That is really important when you're trying to schedule this doctor who thinks that their time is more valuable than everyone else's. So very early on, a month before trial, I make sure that we either get the doctor's cell phone number or their right-hand person's number. And then you want to get the range when they're available. Most doctors want to say, I want to show up on this day at this time, etc. And that's just not feasible when you try a case. You pull together all of the different witnesses that you're going to want. The doctors, the retained experts, you know, the people that are going to have scheduling issues, and all the other people in your case. And what I do once I realize that I've got a pretty decent idea of when we're going to start the trial, you then map it out. And I would suggest that you take a whiteboard. And once I realize, let's say we're going to start voir dire, jury selection, and that's on a Monday, let's say, you know from the week before status conference, is the judge dark on any of those days? Dark meaning, are they not in trial? Many times they're dark on Fridays. So now I know that I've got Monday through Thursday to deal with witnesses. I know what the timing is. And some courts start at 9 and end at 4.30. Some courts start at 10 and end at 4. That's a radically different amount of time. You have a morning and an afternoon in pretty much all of your trial, certainly in state court. And so now what do I have? I have a whiteboard, and I'm writing the different dates, morning and evening. And I know that if I start voir dire on a Monday and it takes one and a half days, then on Tuesday afternoon, I'll write in maybe opening statements. So I know just based on my general idea that on Wednesday morning, right, two days after I start the trial, I need to have my first witness. Now, in an automobile case, um, 
usually that's the defendant. But after that, you have to be really cognizant of your availability of witnesses. Now, as a general rule of thumb, and this is, applies to jurors just like anybody else, if you're telling a story and you start with the end before they know the beginning, they're confused, they're not listening as well, etc. The same goes with jurors where you have to prove liability and then damages. You can't put on all your damage witnesses until the jurors have enough information on liability that they feel like it is irrelevant and important to them to listen to their damages. So as you're mapping out your witnesses, right, you may have damage experts that are willing to testify right away, but you can't call them right away because you need those liability witnesses first. And so once you have the general framework and you know that liability has got to go before damages, at least to enough of an extent for the jurors to get it, then you fill in the potential availabilities of the experts because their experts are they're going to want to know times, et cetera. Now, all of those other witnesses that have a more flexible time, you're going to fill in. But this is really a difficult thing, right? Especially if when you're in trial, somebody gets sick, the court takes an extra recess, they cut off after a half day, a juror's missing, and that you know you wait a little longer, et cetera. Having this framework and being, being able to not only adjust, but to have a contact number and a contact person to be able to do some sort of manipulation of your witnesses is really important. Because remember, you're going through trial. You're trying to deal with the witnesses for the next day. You're trying to make sure that your ducks are in a row. Now what happens if you mess up on your witness scheduling, and the witness is not available. But yeah, wait, but they need to know from the accident reconstructionist about the speeds and about the delta V before they hear from the biomechanist. Oh, but wait, the biomechanist is available before the act. Well, I can't do that. Now, what do you do? Right? This is the thing that we talk about in the weeks before trial. Right? Rule of thumb. If an expert is asking you to pay them for their trial testimony before you know that you're actually going to start the trial on a particular day, my strong advice is to not do that. Right? If you pay a doctor who, you know, God love them, thinks that they are God, and you pay them to show up on a day, and you don't know, in fact, that that's a day that they're needed, and your trial gets delayed a few days or a week, guess what they're going to do? They're going to keep that first money, and they're going to ask for it again. Oh, I cleared my calendar. I, da, da. So all of this is prep for then when you get some more finality on starting the trial, and then you fill it in. Now, this lawyer who came to me last week has never had that experience before. They've never had to go through that process. Do you see how difficult that can be if you do it in a vacuum? Now, just like I'm helping them, right? I'm, I'm involved in the case. I will get involved in your case, but I'll also, if not involved, I'll be happy to give anyone who reaches out the same advice. I'm happy to look at the kind of range of your witnesses, talk to you about your case so I can help you in organizing your case. And by the way, remember, leopards don't change their spots. You know, I talk about, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. Your ability to put this together early and to show the other side that you know what you're doing, that you know how to do it, is going to pay dividends. Maybe they want to settle the case and not go to trial. And the converse is true. If you're disheveled, et cetera, they're going to be like, licking their chops, waiting for you at trial. So reach out. I am very happy to help you with this. It's not because I'm a genius or some smart person, right? although many people have told me how smart I am. But it's not that. It's all experience, and I'm joking. It's all experience. 
from going to trial unprepared, getting your teeth kicked in, and then realizing what it takes pre-trial to set up. 